hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, did a review on this a while back. Now I'm taking a journey through it. I've been reading it. And I just read a little bit, oh, yeah, I don't know, once or twice a week. I'll get it down, read two or three pages. So I've been doing this for a while. I'm just going to tell you I love it. And it's kind of entered my hmm, top ten of Bible study materials I think people could get. Um, like I've got notes written in the front. So like page 71, Nicodemus in charge of the temple water supply. So there's speculation about that because they've got a section here on water supply. So I'm actually on page 73 reading through this, the biography, I read the biographies, the bibliographies, you know, Near Eastern world. So here's what I've gone through to this point. It's dedicated to R.K. Her uh, Harrison, which was great too. So it's got periods, ages, and dates. What does the Bible say about abortion? Or what did the ancient world say about abortion as well? What did the ancient world say about adoption, adultery, age and the aged, agriculture, alcoholic beverages, animal husbandry, uh, aphrodisiacs and erotic spells, aqueducts and water supply. That's where I'm at now. Next will be archives, armies, art, astrology, athletics, banks and loans. And so it, it's, it's phenomenal. What can I say? I'm learning so much. And I do this Biblical Archaeology Today podcast. And so I plan on just going through this with that podcast at some point, using this as kind of a basis. I'm going to read you just about three paragraphs on adultery and just let you see. I mean, it's got... Code of Hammurabi, Middle Assyrian Law, 12, The Seduction of Public of a Married Woman, Old Babylonian Tale of Adultery in Nippur, The Hittite Law, 197 Decree, The Egyptian West Car Papyrus. But listen to this. As part of the negative confession in the Book of the Dead, that's very famous, a man would claim, I did not commit adultery with a married woman. A husband could have sexual relations with servant girls with impunity, though one part of the negative confession has a man claiming, I did not covet my servant girl. And then it gives the reference in text. I love in text references rather than footnotes. I, I love in text references. Then the instruction of Ankh Shinshak. This is all Egyptian. Advised a husband who discovered his wife with another man to divorce her as quickly as possible. Don't run him over. Adultery was the most frequent use for divorce. Later, so not Facebook as it is today. 69 of all divorces are instituted by women. College educated women, 90% right in. That's unbelievable. Later settlements of the 22nd, 26th dynasty stipulated that the husband could make certain divorce payments, alimony, except for the great sin which is found in woman. A papyrus from 492 B.C., indicated that if a wife loved another man more than her husband, this very fact called for divorce. This very fact. So this is, so it takes you, okay, you got the, what the Bible says, and they go through that, but then it takes you through ancient culture. What did they say? And it really brings out, you know, Romans 1, the unanimity of the human race, conscience, all these kind of things. And I'm, I'm thinking about so many things here. A letter from a woman at Deir el Medina reports the outrage of the community of tomb workers at a foreman named Peneb, who was accused of committing adultery with two wives. He was brought before a tribunal and rebuked. In the Ptolemaic period, this is a later period, some religious associations expelled a member who committed adultery with another member's wife. So, you know, just that's the three paragraphs I was going to read. But it, every paragraph is like that it's just got good and like at the end it'll have like see also divorce marriage rape virginity on and on and so forth the jewish world the christian world what polycarp say about like the age and the age of clement clement of alexandria just fantastic agriculture so i couldn't recommend this book more now you might want to use it as a reference i enjoy reading it every day and I don't read it every day, but I enjoy, if I had time, I'd read it every day. It's a long story. It's how my mind works. But I just, whenever I feel like I want, I can glean two, three, four, five good pages and soak it up. Rather than just, well, I've got a chore to read a thousand pages. Actually, uh, 1,816 pages. But, I, you know, just read a little bit at a time and you eventually get through. 
So God bless. Thanks for being with us. Put it on social media. Join us daily. Listen to our other videos. Pray for us. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.